In fact, quantum technologies are nothing new. They are based on the work of Max Planck, Einstein and other famous physicists of the 20th century and they already have many applications we actually use every day. Leathers, GPS and semiconductors are all applications of quantum technologies. When you scan an item at the supermarket checkout, you are using quantum technologies. When you turn on your computer or your smartphone, you are using quantum technologies. Same thing for LED lights or MRI devices. So you see quantum technologies have already transformed the world and we have called that the first quantum revolution. Today, the second quantum revolution is about to happen and it promises to transform the world even more dramatically. I'm not going to go into scientific development, but to make a long story short, I can tell you that quantum technologies will exploit very specific properties of the behavior of matter at the atomic level. And even though it is complicated to understand in detail for non-physicists, the consequences are going to be so huge in so many different fields that it should interest everybody not just technology geeks. Quantum technologies open almost infinite possibilities. And what we can see today is just the tip of the iceberg. Already today, it appears that harnessing the quantum properties of matter could boost the performance of conventional measurement instruments by a factor of at least 10 to 100, even 1,000 in some cases. These technologies would offer endless opportunities in uh, the automotive and defense industries, for example, but also in healthcare and uh, environmental science, because there is virtually no limit to the ideas and inventiveness they would unleash. In the short to medium term, our researchers see real potential in three types of application. First, quantum sensors, which will be used in antennas, scanners, things like that. As I said, they will measure things with up to 100 times or 1000 times greater precision than our current technologies. Well, second, quantum communications, which are so secured, nobody will be able to hack them. They are going to be the ultimate defense against cyber criminals. Lastly, quantum computers. You may have heard of them already. Their incredible processing power will let us solve problems that conventional supercomputers simply cannot solve. So in these three areas, sensors, communications and computers, quantum technologies are going to be a step change, a real revolution. As far as Thales is concerned, a number of applications could become a reality in a foreseeable future within five years in the case of quantum sensors, which are currently the most mature area of quantum research. Quantum computers will take a little more time. Well, we are not talking about a simple incremental improvement. We can already imagine breakthrough applications in transport, energy, security, medicine, mapping or subsurface observation. And let me give a few illustrations. First, in healthcare, quantum sensors are sensitive enough to study the human body at cellular level. Today, it is simply impossible to go so deep. So once quantum technologies are available, doctors will be able to diagnose medical conditions much more accurately and much sooner than they can now. And it can make a huge difference. Think of Alzheimer's disease, for example. Quantum sensors will also help us develop more effective drugs and treatments by studying their effects at microscopic level. So you see, it is likely that quantum technologies will make it possible to cure diseases that are incurable today. Another example is material science. Quantum computers will be able to uh, simulate the behavior of materials in microscopic detail so we can predict their characteristics and develop new materials with the exact properties we need. We could develop substances that are extremely hard, for example, 
or we could make materials that do not retain any heat to build more sustainable houses. Well, another example I can share is navigation. You may know that aircrafts use something called inertial navigation systems to determine their position without needing to rely on satellites. Today, an aircraft taking off from Paris could use its inertial navigation system to get to Seoul, give or take a few kilometers. But it needs a GPS receiver to make a precision landing. With quantum sensors, the same plane could land on exactly the right runway at Incheon Airport without needing a GPS signal at all. This is interesting for planes, but even more so in circumstances where GPS cannot reach you, for instance, below water, underground, or in dense urban areas. These are just a few examples. As I said, there are virtually no limits to the possibilities of quantum technologies. Yes, quantum technologies can absolutely help us to step up to the major challenges that our societies face today. They can help us in two ways. First, they will reduce the impact of some of the technologies we use today. Quantum computers will have much greater processing power than supercomputers, but they will also consume much less energy. And to illustrate this, I can tell you that the energy consumption of a supercomputer is measured in megawatt hours, whereas for a quantum computer, it is kilowatt hours. So you see, here again, we are talking about a real disruption. The environmental impact of technologies will also be reduced because we won't need to make as many products as today. For example, a quantum antenna will cover the entire frequency spectrum, so we won't need to produce a different antenna for each range of frequencies as we do now. Quantum antennas will also be much smaller, so less energy and raw materials will be needed to manufacture them. And what is true for antennas will be true for other devices. Secondly, Quantum technologies will help us to use fewer natural resources. In a world of limited natural resources, optimizing their use is going to be crucial. We need to optimize everything from electricity network to aircraft flight path to consume less energy and emit less greenhouse gases. But for that, so many complex mathematical problems need to be solved because there are so many variables. And until now, we didn't have enough computing power to solve them. For that, quantum computers are going to be a solution. They will help us to make better traffic management systems and power grids, for example, for a greener world. So clearly, yes, quantum technologies can be good for the planet and they can play an important role in overcoming the climate changes we face today.